So one more message and then the food court is waiting for you. And uh, praise the Lord. Where, where is uh, Pastor Kelly Woods? Come up here, sir, and preach to us. Pastor Kelly Woods from California. Come on and put those hands together for Jesus Christ. Come on and put those hands together for our Savior. Does anyone in this house know that Jesus is Lord? Somebody shout, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah to God. He is a wonderful Savior. Raise those hands up all over this place. And for the next few moments, let us just bless the name of our God. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. So we're going to bless his name. The Bible says, John the Revelator says that we have life through his name. So I believe that if we just bless the name of our God and we lift up the name of Jesus Christ today, if every man, if every woman, if every boy, if every girl would just lift up their voice, you don't have to shout, you can speak it out. It's a sweet name, no matter how you say it. Come on, from the pulpit to the door, the balcony, let us bless the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for another day, Isaac. Thank him because he is I lifted up. Thank him because we know that there is no God beside him. Thank him because he's blessing us every day. Lift up your voice. Yes, Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a wonderful name. Sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. Ah, if you're going through trouble, aim to tell you that name of Jesus. Aim any crooked situation straight to speak that name speak that name bow down heads all over this house precious lord we thank you for your goodness and your tender mercy we thank you for this opportunity to come into this house and worship you for we know god that worship and praise does more for us than it could ever possibly do for you but you honor us, Lord, by inhabiting the praise of your people. I pray, God, today that there will be some words spoken in this last message of this daytime session that will minister to these wonderful saints that have come from so far and wide. This entire apostolic assembly that is here, I pray, God, that a word will come It shall be revelatory. Words shall come that shall minister to the hearts of people and those that have come here broken hearted. I pray that they shall leave out of this house with hope. They shall leave out of this house with a new determination. That they shall leave out of this house with courage. They shall leave out of this house with renewed faith. That they shall go back to their cities and to their homes with fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. God, we pray it now. Cause me to speak, God, not words of man, but words fresh from heaven. Do the work in this place, God, like you so wonderfully can. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray it. Amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and bless the name of God. Come on and give him praise. God bless you. Praise the Lord to everybody. I'm so honored to be here today while you remain standing and get your Bibles in your hand. But I'm so honored to be here today at the Union City Apostolic Church. It's been 
uh, several years since I've been here, and we certainly give honor to our Bishop Lopez today. Amen. Amen. And to amen, our presiding president and all of the wonderful bishops and pastors and elders that are here today. It's been quite a few years since I've been here. It's probably been five years that I came and sat in one of the service, and I was so impressed with what the Lord, amen, is doing. I want you to know that those of you that don't know me, amen, I'm a very good friend of uh, Pastor Bishop Joel Trout, amen for him, amen, good friend of mine, and I like to say everywhere I go that I have wonderful people in the building uh, that have helped me along the way I like to acknowledge them, amen. When we started our church uh, several years ago, Amen. In 1995, we started our church with 15 people. Uh, we moved into a building that at that time sat about 200 people. When we moved into that building, we had a membership of about 30 people, and the Lord spoke to us and said, have uh, Bishop Trout come. He doesn't know you, but have him come. Came to our church, ministered to our church, brought a team down to our church for evangelistic, went out, amen, ministering to souls. We brought souls into that crusade, baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. People were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And I do believe that from the seed that was sown in our church, amen, when there were 30 people in our church, amen, now in 2002, because good seed was sown at the very beginning of our ministry, God turned that 30 people into well over 600 people. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. From good seed. So, if God's not done, we're in two locations but with one great vision and we're filling up the second location so by the next time we come, amen, we'll be in the next place, amen, and we thank God. Let us go to the book of St. Matthew chapter number 16 starting at verse 13 and to the sound technicians, I do plan on getting a little loud today and, uh, and I, I know... I know the compressors do wonders for the mics, amen, but don't take my voice away, amen, amen. St. Matthew 16 and 13, St. Matthew 16 and 13, St. Matthew 16 and 13 will not be long today, but I do believe we have a word of revelation that will bless your heart. When the people of God have the word of the Lord in the book of St. Matthew 16, 13, let them say amen. amen. My wife is here, Sister Andrea Sloan Woods. Wave your hand, sweetheart. Amen. Say amen for her. Amen. 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 It's been a very busy weekend. Amen. But we're so glad to be here. 16 and 13. And the word of the Lord says in St. Matthew 16 and 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and one, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And let all of the people of God say, Amen. How many want to have a little fun in this last message? Want to have a little fun. Coming from the passage of scripture in St. Matthew 16, starting at verse 13, I want you to focus on verse 17 where he says, Blessed art thou, 
Simon Bar Jonah. Simon Bar Jonah. And I want to speak to you today from the subject Simon Says. Simon Says. Lord, bless your people right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Give God praise all over this house. Let us begin today by doing a thorough contextual study of the 15th and 16th chapters of the book of St. Matthew. You must understand that when Jesus comes to this particular juncture, that he had just gone through a great struggle with the Pharisees and the religious teachers of his day. He warns his disciples against the leaven of the Pharisees. In other words, amen, don't be corrupted with the religious system of the day. For there is a vast difference between religion and relationship. You see, people that have false doctrine and false teaching have religion. But only those who have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ can confess relationship. Therefore, Jesus wants to clear his disciples' minds. After all of the haggling and all of the fighting with the Pharisees, he has to lead them into a place that they are unfamiliar with. He has to lead them into a place that they've never been before. In other words, many times we don't really know who God is until we get into a place that we've never been before. Any true dreamers, any true visionaries, anyone that has a passion for anything that God has placed in their hearts, they are going to be led into unfamiliar places. But it is in the unfamiliar places that's where you learn God. I'm talking about when God tells you to step out by faith, he's going to send you the money. You don't have any money, but you step out with a Visa card and a MasterCard and an American Express and say, I'm going to charge it. Because God said he's going to pay the bill. Therefore, he leads them into Caesarea Philippi, which was a Greek-influenced city of the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. In other words, this was a place where there were many gods worship. This is that Mars Hill type of place of sorts where, amen, every god had some type of influence on the people. This was a city that worshipped and was drenched in falsehoods and confusion. And Jesus brought them to give a revelation of who he was in the midst of confusion. Let me share this with you. The thing that gives our message power, the thing that gives our message passion and drive is that we hold to who we know even in the midst of confusion. There are those who says we're wrong. But it doesn't matter who says we're wrong because they can say anything they want out of religion. But I know who he is out of relationship. So in fact, my brothers and sisters, the more they say we're wrong, the more it gives revelation that we're right. Because in order for somebody to be right, Somebody has got to be. It is no different than the Pharisees. It is no different than the Greek influenced society of Caesarea Philippi. With 
all the gods around, Jesus stepped into the midst of that. And he just wanted to make sure I've been walking with you all this time. I know you ain't confused. Just because you have all these scholars and all of these theologians and all of these people around you, just because we're in the midst of a pagan influence society I'm here with you and I don't care what they say who do you say that I am <laughs> hallelujah put somebody and tell them do you know who he is so God will lead us into unfamiliar places Sometimes he'll take us away from our comfort zones. and Sometimes he'll take us away from our plush lifestyles. You know, uh, in 2000, the Lord told me to leave my job of 12 years, had a good job making good money. God said, leave the job. I said, Lord, I can't say you crazy. <laughs> so I must be crazy. God said, step out full time. And don't you know that anytime you're going to do anything extraordinary for God, God is going to move you into a place where you move out of your comfort zone. But the wonderful thing about God is you don't step down, but when you make that step of faith, you step up. God's not going to do, tell you to do anything that he's not going to take you up. It may seem strange for a moment, it may be strange for a season, but that's all right. That's letting you know it's God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in fact, it doesn't matter where you walk. What matters is who you're walking with. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death as long as you're walking with the right one. You can walk through gainsayers and haters and people that, amen, want to eat up your flesh, but it doesn't matter who they are as long as you're walking with the right one. I don't care who says what, I know Jesus for myself. I don't care what they say about him, I know him for myself. You can't make me doubt him because I've been walking with him. I've seen him work miracles. They shut up a boost. So Jesus asks the question, and I want you to follow with me in the text just for a minute. I won't be more than 20 more minutes. Jesus brings them into this unfamiliar place and says, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, that's what I love about Jesus. Jesus takes them somewhere unfamiliar and then asks, whom do you say that? It would be one thing for him to say it in Judea. It would be one thing for him to say it in Jerusalem. It would be another thing to say it in Capernaum. It would be another thing to say it in Galilee. It would be another thing to say it in Nazareth. But you take me to a place where the people don't even know God. And there you ask me, whom do men say that I am? Isn't that the way God does you? It seems like you're crying and you don't have no money. And you're sick and you don't feel like you're ever going to get well. And your marriage relationship is not going right. And your job is not going right. And your kids are wayward. And that's the place where God says, do you know me? anybody in this place been there when you were down to your low of lows that's where God says do you love me and I came to tell you when you get to that place you ain't got nothing to lose so you might as well lift up your hands and say I love you 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 despite what I'm going through I bless your name Ah. 
So Jesus asked, whom do men say that I am? And they responded that many of people say that you're John the Baptist, you're the reincarnation of the prophet from the wilderness. Some say that you're Elijah and some say you're Jeremiah. In other words, they thought that Jesus perhaps was one of those characters. They thought perhaps he was John the Baptist because sometimes in Jesus' preaching, he came with great zeal that his message could not be denied. In fact, they could only say, what kind of man is this? And some of them said, well, perhaps he is the prophesied, amen, reincarnation of Elijah, the one that comes in the spirit of Elijah and uh, because he comes with signs and wonders. He heals lepers and he walks on water and he casts out devil and he feeds thousands. And still others say, perhaps he is Jeremiah. Because he comes with great compassion and he looks in the heart of people and just as Jeremiah as that weeping prophet, Jesus had compassion upon people. But there was one thing that they missed. That people said he was this or he was that or he was that or he was him or he was the reincarnation of him. Amen. They said that because they could only see Jesus in one dimension. They could only see him one way. He had to be this or that. They thought he was John, the voice crying in the wilderness. But what they missed is that he was the voice himself. They thought he was Elijah the prophet, a man from the Old Testament. But what they miss is that he was the prophet of prophets. He was the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. He was the prophet that Moses spoke of. They thought he was like Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah had fire shut up in his bones. What they missed is what John the Baptist said Is that he shall come to baptize you With the Holy Ghost and fire So in other words, he was the fire I want to tell you that, amen, we limit ourselves When we only allow God to operate in one dimension of our life I came to tell you that God is at least three dimensional Amen He is everything that you need Not only is he your savior But he's your savior, your healer, and your redeemer Not only is he the father But he is the father, the son, and the holy ghost Not only is he the beginning But he's the beginning, the middle, and the end Not only is he the morning star but he's the morning star the midday sun and the evening light he's not just I am he's I am I was and I am to come hello he is not he that just liveth he is the one that liveth and was dead and is alive forevermore he didn't just die he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. Resurrected. Take somebody and tell them, I want to know him in at least three dimensions. Three in one. It's all in him. Whatever you need, get it, because it's all in him. my God therefore the big question Jesus heard what they said alright some of you think I'm a prophet some of you think I'm a reincarnation but Jesus says something very profound here he says but whom verse 15 whom say ye that I am and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God, speaking of his mediary role. Whom do men say that I am? Then whom do you say that I am? 
there comes a day, my brothers and sisters, where you can't go off of everybody else's testimony. There comes a day where your mother's prayers and your father's prayers and the pastor's prayers are wonderful, but there comes a day where you're going to have to pray for yourself. You can't live for the God that somebody else knows. You've got to live for the God that you know for yourself. I'm not rejoicing and dancing over the bishop's God. I'm not rejoicing and dancing over the pastor's God. I'm rejoicing and dancing over my God because he's been good to me. Hallelujah. So there comes a day where you got to know him for yourself. And I'm not just talking about a dancing, speaking in tongues, know him. I'm talking about knowing him in the good times, but knowing him in the spring too. I'm talking about knowing him on the mountaintop, but knowing him in the valley too. There comes a day where you got to try him. There comes a day where you've got to believe him. There comes a day where you just got to trust him. And if you have not been afforded that opportunity as of yet in your life, just keep on living. Because after a while, there's going to come a day where you're going to touch your husband or your wife or your children or your friend and you say, you know what? We've done all we can do. Now it just comes to the place where we have got to trust God. Now, I want you to notice something here, and this is for the Bible scholar in you. This is a preaching conference, so I didn't come empty handed I want you to notice something here to all you very scholarly people in this house today. In St. Matthew 16 and 14, he says, but whom say ye that I am? Now, I want you to notice something here. It is very interesting that Jesus did not say, who say ye that I am? It is interesting that he said, whom say ye that I am? The reason why is because when you say, who say ye that I am, in the verb structure of the text, it would make the object of uh, the say based upon who Jesus was. In other words, if he said, who say ye that I am? In other words, the emphasis of the text would be upon the personage of Jesus. But Jesus was very careful in his verb structure. He said, whom say ye that I am? The reason why is when you say, whom say that he that I am? It means that the object of the verb is not on the personage of Jesus, but the object of the verb is on whom you say Jesus is. Did you all come to church with me? You see, in other words, Jesus already knows who he is. But what he wants to know is whom do you say that I? So the power behind the text is not, amen, who Jesus was standing there in the flesh. But the power behind the text was that you know who Jesus is. And the power is invoked. The power is activated when you acknowledge who he is. He can be God all he wants to be. But he does not become God to you until you say that you are my God. You can look it up and watch this for yourself. So how many want to know whom he is? Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. One thing, it's one thing for us to think God is powerful. But it's another thing for us to say 
God is powerful. I can think God is powerful all I want to. But the power is not released until I say God is powerful. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. That's why the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's why the Bible said, the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. In other words, the power is activated when you say that he's God. When you say that he's a healer. When you say he's a deliverer so I can think God is a healer all I want to but if I need healing I need to open up my mouth and say God you are Jehovah Rapha the Lord that heals me if I need deliverance I can think deliverance all I want to but I got to open up my mouth and say God I want to be delivered I can think about salvation all I want to but I've got to open up my mouth and say I want to be saved what must I do to be So Simon responded by telling Jesus what he thought. He said, Jesus, let me tell you who I say you are. He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, Simon looked at Jesus deeper than his outer schema. He looked at Jesus deeper than what he saw in the exterior. In other words, he knew it was very important that he responded by saying thou art the Christ the son of the living God because he was bringing emphasis on two very important functions of Christ number one is that he was the Christ he was the anointed one number two he was the son of the living God in other words he was the redeemer now let me tell you something any of you that have walked with God you should know God deeper today than you knew him yesterday. If you walk with Jesus, seen him move by his spirit, seen him heal like the minister was speaking earlier, seen him deliver, amen, don't when situations come up in your life, don't you get of the mindset that God can't do it? You know God can do it because you've seen him do it all around you. But the difference is this time, God wants to do it for you. I understand that you're the anointed one. I understand that you're the redeemer. I know what your function is. I know that all power rests in you. I know, amen, that the power of heaven is within you. I know that you came to redeem mankind. I know what it is you came to do. The question is, is do those of us that are sitting here in Union City Apostolic Church, do we know on an individual basis who he is? Do we know that he came to save us? Do we know that he'll never leave us nor forsake us do we know that he's with us always to the end of the age do we know that he is the power of God do we know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus do we know that we are saved and it ain't nothing the devil can do about it ask somebody do you know it So the Bible says that he received something when he acknowledged who he was. Verse 17 through 20 said, Jesus told him, he said, Blessed art thou Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter And upon this rock I'll build my church And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it And I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth Shall be bound in heaven And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth Shall be loosed in heaven I want to show you a principle A biblical principle 
There are so many people that only acknowledge who God is once God has brought them through something. It is only when we stand upon the triumphant mountain of victory that we can lift up our voice and say, God, thank you. But according to this text, when Simon acknowledged who Jesus was, at that point is where Jesus started releasing the blessings. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The first thing he released, he gave him a blessing a man that gave him revelation knowledge. In other words, he says, flesh and blood hasn't given this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. When you acknowledge God from the beginning, God can give you revelation of who he is. In the 14th chapter of the book of St. John, the Bible said that his Jesus' disciples had been walking with him for some time, but they still did not know who he was. So one of them, Philip, stood up and said, Jesus, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus didn't get mad at him. He said, well, just wait a minute, man. You've been so long time with me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, when you acknowledge him, then you can get revelation of who he is. If you want to know him, ask him. If you want to know what he can do, ask him to do something for you. If you want to know how he works, ask him to work for it. The second thing he received was prevailing power. Prevailing power. Now notice here, when he says in verse number 18, he says, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God gave him prevailing power. The word prevail in the Greek comes from a word nikeo. In English, we use it as the word nike. And literally it means to conquer. You see the world getting all this stuff from the church anyway, amen? It's just a counterfeit. I can do a whole Bible class on that. So God says, when you acknowledge me, I will give you prevailing power. Power to overcome. Power to come conquer. In other words, those of you that got your Nike running shoes, you know something about those Nikes. You, when you go get your pair of Nike shoes, you want to make sure that your Nike has got the Nike imprint in the bottom of the shoes. Because when you get out on the track and start running, you want to make sure your shoes leave an imprint. Well, in the spirit, you want to do that same thing. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and you need to tell the devil you better back up off of my house you better back up off of my children you better back up off of my church because I've got prevailing power I've got power to tread and devil I'm going to leave my footprint in your head you ain't going to forget who I am you're going to remember me because I'm going to leave my spiritual Nike imprint Hallelujah. You know Nike, when they put out their shoe, they have the swoosh. And the devil, when he knows you're coming, he knows you're walking, you don't even have to say nothing. Just a swoosh. Hello, somebody. Touch somebody and tell them swoosh. When the devil hears you coming down the block, you give him a chance to run. You just swoosh. Somebody shouts, swoosh. Then he gave him the keys to the kingdom. Verse 19, I'm almost done, I promise. Verse 19, he gave him the keys to the kingdom. In other words, he gave him power to access the kingdom of God. Now that is a wonderful blessing because you don't need a blessing plan when you got the key to the kingdom. 
You don't need a man a special prayer of faith for this spiritual law of faith and that spiritual law of faith and all that. No, you don't need that when you've got the key. I'm going to give you another revelation. In St. Luke 11, the Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, ye shall find. And knock, and the door will be open. Is that what it says? But notice, St. Luke 11 is talking about what people should do to receive the Holy Ghost. So you ask, seek, and knock before you get the Holy Ghost. But after you get the Holy Ghost, you don't have to knock no more. Because St. Matthew says, now you got the key. I'm not knocking on the door no more. I'm just... Anybody have the key in here? You don't have to knock no more. Knocking is before you got the Holy Ghost. But after you got the Holy Ghost, God gave you the key. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I go ahead and preach in here like I want to? Hallelujah. When you got the key to the kingdom, came to tell you you can use it anytime you want when you've got the key to the kingdom you don't have to wait to go into the most holy place but anytime you want to you can walk in by faith in Jesus Christ I came to tell you when he gave you the key to the kingdom he gave you binding and loosing power now binding and loosing power is authority over situations but I want to tell you something here it is time for many of us to use our key it is time for us to stop knocking that's the problem why you're not getting your blessing because you're just knocking but God says it's time for you to use the key God says there's some things in your life that it's time for you to bind and cast into the pit now don't bind them and leave them in your house but bind them and cast them in the pit are you hearing what I'm saying it's time to cast out fear it's time to cast out doubt it's time to cast out worry it's time to cast out lust it's time to cast out anger it's time to cast out stress it's time to cast out it's time to cast out anxiety it's time to cast out hatred it's time to cast out jealousy But you don't just have casting power, lift power. But you also got loosening power. Touch somebody and tell them, don't forget your loosening power. Because while you're binding fear, why don't you lose prosperity in your life? Yeah. While you're binding doubt, why don't you lose joy? While you're binding worry, why don't you lose power? While you're binding lust, why don't you lose power? Yeah. I'm gonna get real loud now. Can I go ahead and preach it? But I came to tell you that when we were children, we used to play a game. It was called Simon Says. You know how Simon Says go. Simon Says, lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Simon Says, say thank you Jesus. Shout glory to God. Simon didn't say glory to God. Did y'all come to church with me? I told you we were going to have some fun. But if Simon had the power to recognize that Jesus 
was the Christ. I started thinking if Simon had all that power to bind and loose, I wonder what would happen if we said what Jesus said. If Simon had power, then Jesus must have more power. Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness but they shall they shall be filled Jesus ask and it shall be given Jesus seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things shall be added Jesus said I am the bread of life Jesus said I am the light of the world Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life Jesus said he that believeth on me as the scripture said living God and he got binding and loosing power if Jesus said he was the resurrection and the life I'm just crazy enough to find out what would happen if I say something Simon said it Jesus said it but it's time for me to say it and I say saying if I can receive all of those blessings by acknowledging who Jesus is even in my unfamiliar place even when I go through no longer will I allow the devil to cause me to be depressed but I'm gonna get up out of my depression and in the midst of my trial I'm going to say something. I'm going to say that the Lord is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. I'm going to say that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I say I am a royal priesthood but this is the one I like when I am going 
through when I have pain in my heart when I don't understand let me tell you church what I'm going to say I'm going to say I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 